Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you stack silver and you like your daily news unfiltered, uncensored, and especially unbiased, then you've come to the right place. I'm going to be breaking down an article that I found pretty interesting. It's six reasons why a Vancouver expert thinks that silver could soar beyond $30. And I think this is interesting because almost every forecast that I've read for 2024 all says this. We predict silver will be $26 by mid-2024, possibly $30 by the end of the year. I think that's extremely modest and playing it safe, but you never know because what silver's price should be, if you look at the statistics on paper compared to what the price actually is, a completely different thing, entirely different ball game. So it makes sense why some people think that maybe this price suppression could keep on until maybe 2025, 2026, which even myself including says when I think silver will quote unquote explode will be by the year 2025, 2026 for various different reasons. And I'm going to compare and contrast their six reasons with my reasons. And I would love for you guys to throw your opinions down in the comment section below. They go into a very detailed chart, as you can see. We will break this down a little bit because they're looking at a bigger picture target of $70. And that's looking at around the same time I say silver will quote unquote explode, 2025, 2026. So a lot of their points do match up but I'm curious to see what these other points are. So with that said, make sure you guys like the video. If you do like this video and make sure you comment and make sure you're definitely subscribed. So here are six reasons why this Vancouver expert thinks silver could soar beyond $30. Potential for explosive price. Many precious metals analysts suggest that silver prices could experience an explosive rise. In 2024, if global supplies continue to fall short of demand, this suggests that there are that there may be significant upside potential for silver prices, right? And they don't give much context, so I will fill in the blank. I will fill in the context of their points and giving my opinion on them. So yes, f fundamentals have have great pull on prices when we're talking about a perfect world where prices are not manipulated and heavily suppressed. But I still think there will be a day and age where silver takes on a life of its own, regardless of who's trying to do what with it, especially when this corrupt system, for example, the COMEX corruption gets exposed or when, when silver takes on a life of its own in the industrial sector where regardless of what gold's doing, silver's going to do what it does. Regardless of stock market volatility, silver's going to do what it does because it's used for completely different things and it has potential in areas much farther beyond these other assets. Gold does not have potential in the industrial sector where silver does. Where gold shines, silver does shine as well, but silver also has this other thing going for it. So I get where they're saying, you know, th this explosive rise is looking at the supply and demand fundamentals but also the Federal Reserve rate cuts. Now, this is where gold would also benefit with silver. We could also kind of go in to see which of these six points gold also fits in or where gold doesn't. So right now, we're at one for two. Gold doesn't for the first one, but does for the second. Federal Reserve rate cuts. The Federal Reserve has signaled its plans to pivot to interest rate cuts in 2024. Historically, lower interest rates tend to be favorable for precious metals like silver as they can reduce their opportunity costs of holding non-interest bearing assets. Now, we know that we know that one, you can never when they when federal chairman Jerome Powell comes out and says, you know, x y and z and gives these these numbers, you have to take them with a grain of salt because they are going off speculation. The, we, the, the days leading up to the meeting, everyone's speculating on what he's gonna say. After he says these numbers, we plan to do this by the year 2024, we expect. That's all speculation. So everything is speculative, even when they say what they're going to try to do. It's all just opinionated, uh, opinionated assumptions, which when we're living in a time of such fear and all these wars going on, the, the, <laughs> 
you could see why people would have FOMO or fear, uncertainty, doubt in that in return affecting how they invest. And if you're investing off of all this fear and all this anxiety and stress, you're probably going to make some bad decisions. That's why I try to say, take the emotion out, invest with your head and not your heart. But just to the whole point of that, even more so looking at what the actual point is, the Federal Reserve cannot, no matter what, even if the dollar does strengthen over the next year, that doesn't matter because the inevitable collapse of the dollar is inevitable. That, that's inevitable. The $34 trillion in debt we're in, that, that, that's, not, that's never just going to poof go away, especially inclu including the de-dollarization or the dethroning of the USD as a world reserve currency. Throw that in on top of all this, you have an even worse situation. So here's another one where gold won't benefit. So now we're, uh, we're gold's one for three in this line, green energy demand. Silver is used in various applications related to green energy, including photovoltaics, which are PV cells for solar technology and 5G networks. As demand for green energy continues to grow, it is expected to drive industrial demand for silver, which could support higher prices. So the whole green energy thing is, um, I, I feel like nowadays, I, I used to say would be completely underlooked or overlooked, I guess. Um, I, I feel like people just really didn't understand the extent of it or how, how much this could affect the price of silver moving forwards. And I think that's also because people didn't do the research. They didn't look at the numbers. They didn't put two and two together, looking at also not only just going green for, for photovoltaics, which you always hear, just photovoltaics. What about, what, what about EVs? What about uh, silver lithium ion batteries? What about the military sector? What about the, I could list 200 different things that silver is used for. People always go into to just PV cells. And not only that, the, the extremely short half-life that silver has in these solar panels and these windmills. So, yeah, so, uh, green energy is another huge one. And nowadays, I feel like people are finally catching on. Um, and that's, that's a good thing to say because years ago, I'd be saying this and, and nobody would be talking about it. Like, unless you were subscribed to my channel or a few other people like David Morgan, maybe, you didn't know about this stuff or you didn't know the extent or how much opportunity silver had. So here's another one. So now this is favorable supply and demand dynamics. So here's another one gold doesn't. So now we're one for four. Gold benefits in one of these, but the other three, it doesn't. So silver has four things going for it. Gold only fits into one of those categories. Favorable supply and demand dynamics. The, the, the global supply of silver is expected to fall short of demand for the third consecutive year. This article mentions a structural deficit in the silver market, which can be a bullish factor for prices. Low supply, high demand pushes the price up. Industrial demand. Silver is used in a wide range of industrial applications, including consumer electronics, vehicle production. Rising industrial demand can contribute to higher silver prices. How much higher? The sky's the limit. And I think this graph down here, this chart, we could break a little deeper into this. But how much higher? That's also a question that almost could be asked rhetorically, how, who knows? Who knows? How could you compare a dollar price that is diminishing in purchasing power to something that holds its value? A one ounce silver coin is always going to have one ounce of silver inside of it. Regardless of what the price tag does, that, that coin is going to hold its value, literally. Holds, one ounce is always going to weigh an ounce, unless it's like wear down like constitutional silver. But, you know, uh, but, but seriously speaking, on a serious note, no matter who says that one ounce coin is worth what is irrelevant, because the coin's value is the one ounce of silver inside of it, not the price tag. And once you can strip that, once you can completely strip that, 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 um, that perception of silver being attached to spot price you see its real value because the dollar amount is what funnels you to think oh silver's 30 dollars that's pretty pricey right now or 50 dollars silver i'd never pay for that's pretty pricey like andy sheckman says price is the greatest tool of misdirection when silver is going to be a hundred dollars everyone's going to be buying and think it's the best investment in the world it will finally click once it's already, ex once it's already uh, exploding. But when it's low, they see the price and then they make their judgment off the price. Regardless of all the other information showing why it has so much value, for some reason, 
they look at a price and then they determine its value from that current price, not looking at all the other things that makes it valuable right now. It's not even like it's going to be valuable someday. It already is. Other assets, it's going to be valuable someday or it has potential to be. Silver already is valuable. And people cannot get their, their they cannot see past the price for some reason. And, and that's so interesting to me why you would have someone who jumps on the Bitcoin bandwagon after it's already $60,000. But when I was telling them to buy it at $1,200, they, they, were, they were calling me crazy. Which is true. I used to talk. I used to tell people to buy Bitcoin in 2016, 2017. I used to tell people that was a great opportunity. Get in. Nobody did. I almost got. I got kicked out of the silver community, somewhat, so to speak. They were like, "You're not a silver stacker anymore." And I was like, "No, I'm. I, I'm. I see opportunity here. I'm telling you guys." And then it did. A lot of people got rich off that. I don't tell people to buy Bitcoin anymore because it's already exploded. Um, and, you know, the same thing, people are going to jump on the bandwagon after it's already exploded because they need that validation, that confirmation where true silver stackers don't. When the price goes down, we don't get worried. We get happy because we can buy more for cheaper. So um, here's another one. Um, potential for greater than $30 prices. And I could even give some other ones like the gold to silver ratio. Gold's already exploded, you know, past um, you know, it's all time highs right now. Silver is not even half of that. But potential for greater than $30 prices. Some experts believe that silver prices could push up towards the major resistance level of $30 in 2024. There's optimism that this price barrier will be breached, potentially leading to further gains. And uh, if it does, then we would see some pretty funky things happening. So um, if you want to talk about a roller coaster, if you want to talk about if you want to talk about volatility, if it breaks above thirty dollars, wow! And then if you want to talk about some real volatility, where I mean the sky's the limit, talk about breaking above fifty dollars. That resistance level has been held for over forty years. I mean, nineteen eighty, fifty dollars silver from the Hunt brothers, and then twenty eleven, fifty dollars silver. Imagine if it breaks above that that resistance level of $50, that psychological resistance level of $50, it's been happening for so many decades, the sky would be the limit. A $30 psychological resistance level is still pretty strong, held from early 2021 by Wall Street Silver, where it skyrocketed up to that and then kind of held off. Obviously, there's a lot of strings being pulled behind the scenes of this manipulated market where I'm not just speculating or theorizing that is people getting sent to prison for manipulating the market this year from J.P. Morgan. Um, so, you know, that's actually going on, I'm sure, on a much grander scale by much. I'm, I'm, I can't even imagine how many banks. I mean, Merrill Lynch and the Dutch Bank are two other banks I know that got caught for spoofing along with J.P. Morgan, which is placing false or buy sell orders on these exchanges and then canceling the order before it goes through. Um, basically just um, deceiving other investors on the exchange at that point in time, thinking that a whole bunch of silver is getting bought up or a whole bunch of silver is getting sold, and they start investing off of these false numbers, not knowing that that order that they're looking at or this volume they're looking at is actually not real. Um, and then they can do what they want and then they'll cash out or whatever, you know, that that's a short form of it. And it goes much deeper than that. If you want to guys want to look into that, just look at any of Ted Butler's research on COMEX corruption or manipulation. He he um, he goes very, very deep and thoroughly into that rabbit hole. So now let's look at this chart a little bit talking about bigger picture target $70. And that's looking like 2026, 2027. Um, $35 target, it's looking like at 2025, so still very modest, but let's start back here. So they saw the 2008, this was 2008, what happened? Well, you can see this whole chart. This is $50 silver in 2011. 2008 credit financial crisis, right? Um, the recession slash depression stuff happening, billions of dollars in stimulus kind of happening. And then that, you can see how three years later that led to $50. And then it goes back down, you know, and then the last 10 years, the average price of silver has been $15. And I've been stacking for, you know, eight, nine years now. So 
the majority of my time purchasing silver, I've been buying it around $17, $18. I remember the first time silver broke above $21, the July uh, 2016 high. Or, yeah, yeah, $21. Yeah, right here. Right here, July 2016 high. I was making videos back then. Right here. I wonder if I can zoom this in somehow. Um, no, but uh, I'll zoom it in on this video. But yeah, on my channel, you could probably go back and find these videos. When silver broke above right here, we celebrated. Isn't that crazy? Like $21. Like nowadays, you guys look at $21 and you're like, that is so cheap. That's insane to think that you guys were thinking silver is high back then. Yeah. So nowadays, what do you think we look at when we see the price? Not talking high, a uh, price high of like, wow, silver is expensive. More looking like we've been buying it for $15. So when we look at $26, that's, you know, that's a lot more than we've been paying for the last decade. Where someone else, let's say they started at, in early 2021 at $30, now they look at $26. You see how they look at the price as being extremely low? Where someone else who started during my time sees the price as high? You see how depending on when you enter the market can depend on uh, or could determine if you think silver price is low right now or high right now. And you should strip all of that away because whether you think $26 is good or is high or low is irrelevant because in the grand scheme of things, $15 or $20 or $26 is pennies, not even pennies compared to how valuable silver really is. Um, so, um, so yeah, you can see right here, potential base buildings necessary to build for the power to break out. And yeah, like, like corrections are actually the correct thing to do. It needs to go down a little bit, up a little bit, down a little more. Because if it just skyrockets, like look what happened in 2011. It just went straight up. If it would have been more of a gradual approach, it would have built price stability. Then when it would have corrected off of that overbought territory, it would have landed and been able to settle. But it went up so fast, there was no settling it had to fall straight back down, just like Bitcoin in 2016, 2017. It went from $1,200 to like $16,000 within a couple, like in like two months, three months or whatever. That's too fast. And that's why it crashed and took years upon years to recover. Now it has, but remember how many years Bitcoin was sitting at like 8,000 whatever dollars? I don't know. I didn't pay attention that much, but remember how many years it took? That's because it shot up way too fast. So we want a gradual approach. And that's also why when people say silver might explode to $100 in two months, okay, that's not good. That's too fast. It wouldn't last. It needs to gradually happen. Um, but anyways, yeah, I thought these were some pretty good points. Out of these six, um, gold benefits one of them. One, which is the money side. The rest, the industrial side of things, uh, that's where silver is. Um, so, I mean, I guess you could suggest gold has positive sentiment, but um, in interest in silver increases, it could boost prices, which, yeah, that's same with gold somewhat. Gold is a much bigger market than silver, so that's why the volatility aspect is so much higher on silver side, is because, and that's why people manipulate the price of silver, it's a lot easier to do so, because um, gold is just such a massive market can, uh, compared to silver. Uh, so yeah, anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Uh, let me know if you like this video. Remember, I post daily. Make sure you go subscribe if you guys want some more content. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. I'm very excited for us to reach that. Also, if you guys wanted to purchase some of this shiny stuff or the yellow stuff, even Slayer at MouseFranklin.com, I will hook you guys up. We got deals right now, the one-ounce Trump bars. Um, we got some other stuff as well. Great prices on constitutional silver, eagles, anything. We got you guys. Slayer at mousefranklin.com. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.